Hello everyone. I'd like to take you through a brief tutorial now to show you how to generate code from an existing ROS Simulink model that's part of our release. In this tutorial, what I'm going to be showing you is how to make some C or C++ code that comes straight from the Simulink models that we've distributed. So let's start up by loading the Simulink model. Now I already have MATLAB running here in order to save a little bit of time during the processing. But what you'll want to do is go into your cat vehicle workspace source your devel slash setup.bash, and then open up MATLAB. Once MATLAB is opened up, the next step that you'll take is to find the source cat vehicle simulink file, or simulink directory. So source cat vehicle simulink, and then in here the cat vehicle Hoffman follower.slx. So this is the model that we ran in the previous tutorial. And in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to generate the C and C++ code. The first thing that I want to show you is that under simulation parameters, model configuration, in order to make the code generation work, we've made a small change to the default here. And that change is that under hardware implementation, instead of selecting none or get hardware support packages, we've selected the robot operating system. What this means is that we're going to be generating code that will compile with ROS. And in fact, if we look in the code generation section now, we can see that it's already selected by default the catkin toolchain. And it has a target file here that tells internally to Simulink exactly how to use the templates that are available in order to take the code that we've written in MATLAB, compile it, and make all of the interfaces and APIs work correctly with ROS. So you'll press OK here. I'm pressing Cancel because that didn't change anything. And the next step is to actually generate the code. So code, C, C++, build model. After a while, you'll just press Control B and your generated code will be generated for you. Now I showed you this to show you exactly what kind of errors you'll get if you don't follow the, tu the tutorial carefully. So I have a problem here. It says you can't, I can't access the ROS master at this location. This is something that I forget all the time and I know you're going to forget it too which is why in the tutorial I say here, right after we navigate to that file, make sure that ROS core is running. So because ROS core wasn't running, it doesn't know how to check to see what kind of file types are available. So let's start up ROS core here. And now back in Simulink, I'm just gonna press Control B or code C, C++, build model. And what ROS will, or what Simulink's uh, robotic system toolbox will do is take care of ensuring that all the message types match. Um, it's going to use information that it gets from ROS in order to make sure uh, that all the generated code is going to match the ROS APIs and interfaces. And we can see that it generated a new version of the model here. Your mileage may vary if this is uh, if you're using a later version from source that's made some changes to the model. Um, the source code was generated here. And it tells even where the source code was generated in terms of locations on our machine. So here in the cat vehicle workspace directory, we can see that that's where the code's been generated. Okay, good news. Let's now go and see if I can see that information. I'm going to press Control C in ROS core. And I'm going to look in my cat vehicle workspace and see now that I have, in addition to the source directory, the develop directory, and the build directory, I also have these new files, build ROS model, I have the, the real-time workshop generated code from here. And then I also have this .tgz file, which is the generated Catkin code for a Hoffman follower in C, C++. So if I look in source, I can see that I have two things, cat vehicle and obstacle stopper. These are the, the source files that I got from Git repositories. I'm going to run in order to take advantage of this generated code. I'm going to execute build ROS model. And I want to build the ROS model that's contained in cat vehicle Hoffman follower.tgz. And I want to generate it to a workspace. So I'm actually currently in my cat, cat vehicle workspace. So I'm going to press dot to signify that I want it to have it uh, generated to my current directory. And this script not only extracts the files to my source directory, it also goes ahead and calls cat can make so that I'll be ready to run uh, everything. So I didn't change anything here, but if I look now in the source directory, I can see that cat, can under, or cat vehicle underscore Hoffman follower has been generated. And it changed the capital F and follower here 
uh, to be the lowercase f here so that it matches all the camel case. So now I'm ready to ROS launch, or actually I need to source devel setup.bash, and I'm ready to ROS launch cat vehicle, cat vehicle uh, skidpan.launch. So I can see this. I'm going to start up my gazebo client so that I can see what my car is looking at. And finally, source devel setup.bash, ross run Hoffman, or sorry, cat vehicle Hoffman follower, Hoffman. Source devel setup.bash Ross run Hoffman no Ross run cat vehicle Hoffman follower cat vehicle Hoffman follower node. And now we're running in gazebo, we should see the car driving around. You may remember from the uh, other simulation that we ran, we were seeing a real-time factor in the neighborhood of between 0.7 and 0.9. Now my real-time factor is actually pretty close to one, so it's not perfect. Uh, but I have a much better real-time factor now running the generated code than I did running the code from Simulink. So the lesson here is that the code generation gives me the ability to distribute my code without having to distribute the Simulink models. Um, so if your colleagues don't have the robot system, robotic system toolbox, you can still generate your code and send it to them. But it also means that the code is going to execute much more effectively because it's running native code that's compiled for your machine instead of being interpreted and running through all the APIs of MATLAB and Simulink. So hopefully this was useful to you, and I look forward to seeing you in another tutorial.